coming to you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. This is Sky High Radio. Hello? I'm very pleased to welcome to Sky High Radio a man who has just been to the world premiere of one of this summer's most anticipated movies. And not because he blanked his way in. Oh no, he only blooming directed it. The film in question is Sausage Party, and the man who makes it happen is the one and only Greg Tiernan. Hello, Greg. How are you? I'm doing fine, Ian. Thank you so much. How are you? I'm not too bad. Not too bad at all. So have you recovered from the uh, the after party from the premiere? Um, Almost. Yeah, it was, it was quite the party. So. <laughs> did it go yeah. on a bit, did it? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. These things always do. But especially this one, this movie was, uh, for all of us involved, was a, a long time in the making. So I think for most of the night, we uh, we kept pinching ourselves and saying, oh, my God, we actually got this thing done and it's on the screen. So, um, yeah, the party went into the uh, more than the wee hours, <laughs> put it like that. So. Well, before we get to the serious stuff, I always like to ask some quick fire questions so just so the listeners get to know the real you a little better. The first yeah. answer that comes into your head is always the best. Are you ready to go? Yeah. Let's go. What time did you get up this morning? Uh, 5.30. What time did you go to bed last night? <laughs> Two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> what was the last thing you watched on TV? Um, preacher. What's your favourite meal to cook? Uh, currywurst. German currywurst. Do you prefer Chinese or Indian? Oh, that's a hard one. Uh, love them both. I'd have to say Chinese. Cooked breakfast or cereal? Oh, cooked breakfast. Full English. Favourite animal? Uh, dog. Newspaper or book? Uh, Favourite book, Moonfleet by J. Mead Faulkner. Favourite TV show? Um, That changes all the time. Uh, right now, I would probably say Preacher again. Do you prefer rice or pasta? Uh, rice. Favourite film? Uh, all-time favourite film, Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe and the Seven Year Itch. Favourite chocolate bar? Uh, that would have... I don't have much of a sweet tooth, but uh, I would have to probably say Mars bars. Out of nostalgic, nostalgia's sake. Fair enough. Shower or bath? Oh, shower every time. Morning person or night owl? Uh, more of a morning person, as my uh, 5.30 a.m. rising quite answers. <laughs> Indeed. And finally on my show, we do a thing called the Great British Cake Scoff, where I eat cake instead of bake it. So what's your favourite cake to scoff? Uh, favourite cake to scoff would probably be... Cake Battenberg, but it's not technically a cake. My favourite would of all time is a good old-fashioned chocolate eclair. Oh, yes. So, but not exactly a cake, so I'll, I'll stick with Battenberg for the cake purists out there. So. Thank you very much. So then, how long have you been involved with animation for? Oh, God. Uh, just th this past January, I celebrated or maybe commiserated with myself on 30 years in the business. And what got you into animation? Um, I had always wanted to be an animator um, and I had no idea how to do it but growing up in uh, as you can probably tell by my accent I'm originally from Ireland but uh -huh. <laughs> I grew up in the UK and uh, as a kid I absolutely adored when I'd come home from uh, from school I adored watching Tom and Jerry cartoons and Danger Mouse and all sorts of anything as long as it was it was animated I loved it um, and I had no idea how anybody ever actually got to do that as a job. Um, but I was fortunate enough that uh, when I was at university in, in Belfast, uh, the animation company Don Bluth Productions that made An American Tale and The Land Before Time, they actually moved their whole outfit from Los Angeles to Dublin, Ireland. And so I... Uh, on a whim, immediately dropped out of uh, university and went down and camped out on their doorstep until they gave me a job. And here I am now, 30 years later. Uh, so what was the first thing you actually worked on that we may have heard of? An American Tale, a movie about five of all the mouse. That oh, right, was the yeah. fir very first movie I worked on was An American Tale. And uh, we all know that you've worked with Thomas the Tank Engine. He's a oh, yeah. legend in the world of children. So did you enjoy the challenge of bringing it back with the use of CGI? 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that was a huge, huge honor for us, um, and particularly for me to direct it, but for my studio here in Vancouver at Nitrogen, um, for those guys to ask us to to shepherd uh, Thomas into the CG age was huge, because um, it's such an iconic show, like you say, beloved by millions of kids around the world, but especially so in, in the UK. Um, and so, yeah, that was a very daunting task, but we absolutely loved our time on Thomas. It was amazing. Ah, so how did you actually get into directing? Um, well, that was a long period of just uh, working uh, at the craft, I guess, because um, I started off, I won't give you the entire boring long history of it, but started off at the, you know, so to speak, on the bottom rung as a cell painter. So I was one of the guys that was responsible for for literally painting the uh, acetate cells back in the 2D days of the industry. Yeah. Um, and worked my way up to become an animator and a storyboard artist. And as a storyboard artist, you're involved a lot more with uh, coming up with the ideas for the particular camera angles and shots and pacing of the movie. And from there, it was sort of a natural progression to get into actually directing the whole thing. So it was just a, you know, just progressing through my career in the industry got me into it. And I, I started directing, oh God, way back in like 1993, I guess, 94. And uh, I've been doing it ever since. So as a director, do you always have a really clear vision of what you want from a project? Or do you take... Um... Well, well, that's the idea. In theory, that's, that's the best way to do it. But it's not always that way. Um, but yes, you, you, you try to uh, figure out exactly what the uh, any given project needs and, you know, you're being put in that position um, to provide, uh, you know, vision and clarity for the entire team and the entire crew. Um, but it's a very, animation is a very, as is all filmmaking, it's a very collaborative um, journey. So there's a lot more people. It's not like a, a it's a directorial rather than dictatorial. So it's not that I get to do everything my way, but yes, I'm the guy that people would look at to just say, okay, well, where are we going from here? Are we turning right or left? Or are we putting the pedal to the metal? How are we going to do this, Greg? So that, you know, there's a, there's a lot of decisions that, that, that stop at my door, but it's, you know, when you're working with a team of, of artists, creative people and writers, it's a fantastic experience. So um, I would say it's much more just keeping a firm hand on her and letting everybody else do their job and, and that's how these things get made so tell us about sausage party <laughs> what do you want to know about sausage party <laughs> well how did you get to be one of the directors for that how, who approached you well I, I should ask as well ian if this is uh, your show is a fan show then i will keep everything clean but uh, as everybody knows hopefully by now sausage party is the first r-rated uh, CGI animated movie in the world so it's a, for us again it's a huge deal to be yeah. entrusted with this but um, Sausage Party actually came to me because my good friend uh, Conrad Vernon who is my co-director on the movie yeah. um, we have known each other for many years and we worked together on a movie in LA back in the early 90s called Cool World and that was a Ralph Bakshi movie um, and Ralph, um, back in the 70s and the 80s, was the king of, of doing more adult-oriented feature film animation. So it was fantastic to work with, with Ralph. But all these years later, uh, Conrad was, uh, he's a DreamWorks director, and he was working, uh, directing Monsters v. Aliens and working with Seth Rogen, um, who did the voice of the blob in that movie. And Seth pitched the idea to Conrad um, about doing an R-rated animated movie and why nobody has done it. And Conrad, in turn, pitched the idea to me and said, I'd like you to direct this with me, and I'd like your studio to take on the production, if possible, and that's that happened. Ah. So what's the hardest bit of directing an animated film like that, an R-rated animated film? Is it, is it no holds barred? Is it just do and say as you like? Um, to a certain degree, yes. To be honest with you, Ian, the, the biggest... Um, hurdle that we had to overcome was getting the movie sold and greenlit in the first place yeah. um, because not so much in Europe um, I'm, I'm happy to say but specifically in North America 
um, which of course is the the big big market for all of these movies, animated or otherwise. But animation is seen as a children's genre, yeah. um, rather than the medium that the creative medium that it should be seen as. And of course, in many markets in Europe and in Asia, um, animation is very much. It's just as viable a means of storytelling for any subject matter as as live action is, um, but that's never been the case in in the North American market. So that was huge for for the studios that have to actually invest money and uh, promoting these things. It's a big risk for them. Um, if you look at all of the movies that animated movies, I mean, they're way way on average way more successful at the box office than the average live action movie. Yeah. And most of the hugely hugely uh, uh, a huge success, success, box office success stories are animated movies, um, and it's hard to break out of that formula. It's hard to pitch to a studio. You know what? All of these family animated movies that make you guys millions and millions and millions of dollars. Well, we're going to buck the trend and do one for adults. They're immediately their first reaction is whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> hang on a second. You're asking us to do what? Say what? <laughs> you know, it's the sort of if it ain't broke, don't fix it type thing. Yeah. So anyway, that was the hardest thing was to get this thing done, but. A fantastic lady named Megan Ellison, who owns Annapurna Pictures, um, stepped up to the plate, and uh, and she believed in the project. So she put, uh, put her weight behind it. Um, and after that, uh, Sony Columbia got on board and uh, decided to back us to distribute the movie. And that's that was really the biggest the biggest hurdle. Making the movie itself was a whole different story. That was in all these thirty years, it was the most enjoyable and creatively rewarding experience of my entire career. I'm um, working with Seth and Evan is amazing. Um, and Conrad and I as directors uh, were pretty much given carte blanche to do whatever the heck we wanted. <laughs> so we did. <laughs> Fair enough. How long did the film take to make? Um, actual production time, uh, two and a half, almost three years. Um, but in total from inception to getting it done was coming on to 10 years. Cool. It's quite a long time then. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's got some uh, very big Hollywood A-list actors in it, as you've already mentioned, like Seth Rogen, Christine Wiig, Jonah Hill. So how easy is it to direct them as opposed to people that are trying to make it into the film industry? Um, those guys were amazing. Um, every single one of them, I think that this movie has been uh blessed with 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 talent that not just from you know the 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 animation talent at the studio here but uh, uh voice talent that that wanted to be involved in this movie and they were amazing every single one of them um usually uh, when we're directing uh actors uh in the recording booth for uh, any given animated project they follow a script and it can be sort of sterile for the actor because you're not on set, you're not acting with other talent, you're not, you know, interfacing the director and sometimes a producer or two are behind the glass with the engineer and, you know, you're reading your lines a few times and saying, was that all right? But in this instance, we did it differently. We had myself and Conrad in the booth with the actors, with Seth and Evan, and it was very much more of a, you know, using the script as a loose guideline and doing more improv comedy. And some of the funniest moments in the movie came out of, of, of that approach of doing this. And so everybody from, you know, Oscar nominated actors to, uh, you know, just funny, funny actors that aren't really well known. They were all brilliant. Uh -huh. The film has been described as one of the uh, must see films of the summer. And with millions of hits already on YouTube on its trailers, you must be surprised how popular it seems to be already. And it hasn't even come uh -huh. out yet. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, it sounds very uh, arrogant and braggadocia, but I'm not surprised because we knew we had a good movie. Yeah. Um, but I'm thrilled about it, and Seth and Evan and Conrad were all thrilled about it for sure. Um, so you know, hopefully, the you know the interest that we've had online will translate, and people will will go in their droves to the box office and. Um, you know, not just for the sake of our movie, because, you know, at the end of the day, of course, our movie will make whatever it makes at the box office. But it's way more important to us as a studio here, to Nicole and I that run Nitrogen Studios, to Conrad um, and everybody from the animation end of things is way more important to us that this opens the door 
for other filmmakers um, to be able to get more adult uh, oriented content that's animated out there. Um, and as I said earlier, it, it's, a, it's a viable way of making movies. Um, it's not just kid stuff. So hopefully that will kick down that door and, and give some more people the opportunity to do this. Does that include making a sausage party too, if it's successful? Um, I would say that's very much on the cards, yes. Yeah, um, of course. As we've, we've been talking about that for a while. And, you know, yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, you know, one, once people have got, uh, so to speak, a taste for these sausages, I think they're, <laughs> they're going to want to see more. Uh, right. If there's one thing that you brought to this film that you're most proud of, what would it be? And why? Um, I think the most proud is that we... Uh, showed the animation world and the film world that we can actually make a movie that looks like a huge budget Pixar movie yeah. for a fraction of the cost. Um, and we're very, very proud of, of the work that our crew did on this movie. That's that's my proudest thing. So um, apart from Sausage Party 2, are there any uh, current new projects that you're currently working on? Yes, we are right now. We're delighted to be working with uh, Guillermo del Toro and DreamWorks on uh, a Netflix uh, show called uh, Troll Hunters. Uh -huh. So the studio is hard at work on that right now. And we're also uh, putting the finishing touches on our first original feature film script, which we are going to be uh, uh, pitching around Hollywood soon and we're happily fielding offers right now. Sausage Party has, uh, has got us a lot of uh, interest in the studio here so uh, we're, we're, we've got a lot of offers to, to make other movies for people so it's, it's an exciting time for us right now. Sounds interesting, sounds interesting. So if there's one film that's already been made uh, which you wasn't part of, what would that be that you wished that you was part of? If that makes sense. An animated movie or any movie? Any movie. Um, I would have to say, and this is weird because nobody, to the best of my knowledge, has invented a time machine yet, but I would have to say my favorite movie of all time, um, The Seven Year Rich, way back in the 1950s. <laughs> if I could go back in a time machine, hot tub time machine or otherwise, if I could <laughs> go back in time, I would love, absolutely love to have been involved in any 1950s especially Marilyn Monroe movie ah. you're having a small dinner party which three guests would you invite alive or dead choice is yours famous or um, not I would invite Marilyn Monroe no surprise there <laughs> I would invite uh, Eddie Cochran who is my all time uh, rock and roll hero guitar yeah. hero and you know what this is going to sound really controversial but I would invite Hitler just to ask what the hell were you thinking dude <laughs> <laughs> that's fair enough we've had some stranger answers so that's quite a, a sensible <laughs> answer and finally what can't you leave your house without um I cannot leave my house without my guitar picks I'm a guitar player um in my spare time and I never ever ever leave the house without two guitar picks in my pocket well, thank you very much for joining us right here on Sky High Radio, Greg. I know you're very busy at the moment. Sausage Party can be seen at all good cinemas and probably some bad ones too from Friday, <laughs> August the 12th. So go and see it. Thank you very much for joining us, Greg. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Sky High Radio. It's about you and the music.